I believe the new American dream is taking responsibility for yourself and owning your own piece of property and being self-sufficient. Homesteading and starting your own off-grid property is a great way to live independently and self-sufficiently. Hello everybody, my name is Richard. I have been living off-grid in the Sonoran Desert for the past four years. I feel so grateful to be living self-sufficiently, to be living debt-free, and to truly be living the American dream. But it comes with a lot of hard work and has come with a lot of sacrifice. So this week we are getting into the realities of starting your own homestead, own off-grid property, and how you can go from the very beginning of raw land like I did to living a comfortable existence paying very little in taxes, nothing in water, nothing in electricity, and just living your best life. This episode, we are talking about water, sanitation, food storage, and power. And the three tiers that you will probably start at, upgrade to, and then finish with as you're going through your homesteading journey. When we began out here so many years ago, Water was definitely a struggle because we were having to get water from town. This is a totally valid way to exist. Again, with this whole series that I've been talking about, we are not focusing on living a life of luxury. We are focusing on just surviving until we can get to a place of financial independence and get our homestead into a place where it is good and comfortable but that comes with a lot of sacrifices right off the bat. So I see three steps in basically any homesteader's journey that doesn't have a well already established on their property. We are in Southern Arizona. To dig a well here is extremely expensive and extremely impractical. So when we moved to the property, we were actually getting five gallon jugs of water and taking them to town every time we went to town and filling up 30 gallons at a time and bringing it back home in the truck. We did this for six months. It is exhausting, it is annoying, it is not an ideal situation, but just remember it is temporary and something that is not going to last forever. After we had a little bit more money saved up, we got a little more established, we built our pump house and got some proper water tanks. So we ended up getting two 2,500 gallon tanks a nice shallow well pump, and that was able to give us the opportunity to actually have water trucked in instead of having to go to town to get the water. So we have 4,000 gallons of water trucked in about every four months now, and this is using water frugally, but comfortably. Level three is what we are working on currently, and that is our cistern and rainwater collection. So out here, we are in the desert, but we get about 15 inches of rain a year. We are able to collect the water that comes down from our roofs into our tanks. And this year, hopefully we will be fully self-sufficient on our water. That $100 water bill will go away completely, or at the very least, very rarely be needed because we will be filling up our tanks during monsoon season and storing that water all year long. Second thing that you will want to set up on your property pretty much immediately, which this can be done in a weekend, is sanitation. So everybody poops. We have used the composting toilet system out here for many years. It is a very simple system. It is very inexpensive to build. It is a five gallon bucket and a funnel. Basically, separate your liquids and solids. If you guys want me to go into a full deep dive on how we poo out here, let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to do that. When we bought this land, again, we had no water access. We had no anything access. We tore out the bathroom in our RV immediately because we knew we didn't have black tanks and we weren't gonna tow the RV to a black tank park. How we bathed was Planet Fitness was our luxurious bathing. And I don't know their current prices, but I think at the time they, it was like $20 for a couple to use their showers and literally we just use their showers and their massage chair. And then we would always go in when they had pizza and donuts. So we would get some food. Also, it was very much worth the $20 for two of us. The other way we bathed when we first moved to this property was literally a pot of water on the stove and sponge bathed it. 
for us, we were trying to live as cheap as possible. And so we were doing a lot of Costco and bulk goods and things like that. The problem is when you're living in a tiny RV with two people, it just, you don't have enough storage. Where we are, the mice are absolutely insane. And also we didn't have really enough power to run a fridge full time, run a freezer, to have kind of those normal creature comforts of life. So we had to get really creative on how we built our food storage systems. For us, the first thing that we bought for food storage was actually military cargo boxes off of Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks that were watertight, weathertight. They were meant to hold, I don't know, bombs or something like that. We were able to store a lot of our bulk food in that and then just had little jars in our RV. Another good option if you're wanting to keep things cooler is to use metal storage bins and basically create a mini root cellar. So you just dig a hole, put your metal storage bin in, and that will kind of keep your food and stuff at a more regular temperature. I've also seen people do this with broken chest freezers where you bury them so they're nice and insulated. The chest freezers are amazing because they are super well insulated and even without power, they will keep a general ambient temperature to be able to keep things cool and store them long term. As you level up, we got into our earth bag root cellar and that was our first huge project on this property. We're out in the desert, big fluctuations between day and night temperatures. We wanted a place that was temperature controlled without having to use a lot of air conditioning or electricity. And so we built our root cellar. It was about $2,000. It was a nine month build. We have improved our systems dramatically <laughs> since then, but it has been worth every penny as a nice place to store bulk food. The last and final thing I want to talk about here is power and power is likely going to be one of your biggest costs except for the property itself. Our systems now are fairly small for the size of our property and they were still around $12,000. This was something that was saved up over multiple years to be able to make this very large purchase, but you don't have to have a ton of money to put into a solar system or a giant generator or anything like that starting out. How we started out was with a Goal Zero battery pack and a little 200 watt solar panel. Set the solar panel outside, we plugged in our phone, our lights, things like that, just very, very low draw energy things into our Goal Zero and lived off of that for about a month before we bought our first mini solar system, which was 600 watts worth of panels and a small Tesla battery. For maybe a thousand dollars, you can get a somewhat okay system to at least run a laptop, run a hotspot, run your lights, things like that. It would not be big enough to run a fridge likely, but again, we're not worrying about a ton of creature comforts right now. We are trying to get our homestead up and going so that we can live independently and make some sacrifices as we go. The next upgrade is likely a small gas generator or just upgrading your panels, upgrading your battery to a more legitimate system. But the nice thing about a small generator is you can kind of charge those batteries up. You can get a generator that is a little bitty for a couple hundred bucks and be able to charge your batteries up. So hopefully then you can at least run a fridge, um, at least run a little bit more creature comforts. Once you get the full system ready and you have the money and want to pull the trigger. It is amazing what they have done with solar technology these days. It has completely changed since I started out here four years ago. Now they have a lot of all-in-one systems that include your charge controller and your inverter in one nice neat little box. It's a few wires to hook up. It is something that is very DIY friendly. Solar is getting a lot cheaper and a lot more obtainable for people. I imagine over the next four to five years, the prices are going to be dropping significantly. So I would budget, depending on your needs, probably ten dollars to $12,000 for a nice solar system. Those are six things and six very brief overviews of how to get started on your homestead for likely less than what you are paying in rent right now. I cannot tell you the freedom and the joy that comes from owning your own home managing your own power, collecting your own water, and knowing that if the city power goes down, 
it's fine. I'm fine. I'm good. If a storm comes and knocks out my power, I know how to fix it because I installed it. It's getting harder and harder to sustain yourselves these days. And so I hope this information is helpful for you and hopefully inspiring you on the first steps to get into your homesteading journey. Again, live a few years like most people want so you can live the rest of your life like most people can't. If there are any one of these sections that you want more information about or want to learn about, please leave me a comment below. That really helps me dial in what you guys are wanting to learn. Thank you everybody for making it this far in this video. If you enjoyed this type of content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button below. We are coming out with new content regularly and pushing more homesteading 101 educational informational content. We have a couple videos queued up for you right now with more educational content, more in this series. Be sure to go check those out next. And thank you guys for watching. Go build something cool.